Next up is Travis Smith from Tripwire presenting Attack as a Teacher. Uh, Travis has presented original research at Black Hat, RSA, and Sector, among others. He's been focused on researching uh, various attack techniques for over a year and is listed as a key contributor to many of them. Please welcome Travis Smith. Thanks. All right, um, so he kind of covered who I am. Uh, I think I have the only distinction of when I sent in my slides that they actually called them disturbing, um, which is mainly because of this. Uh, so uh, the goal as a teacher, uh, you know, we're trying to teach people is to kind of imprint upon them a better version of ourselves and teach them what we know to create basically mini-me's but better. Um, so what we want to do uh, using the attack framework is, you know, use that to, as, as part of that. And over the past few years, I've had the privilege of having interns that I want to teach security. Uh, and the first year, I just went gung-ho, and I said, let's load up Kali Linux, let's open a damn vulnerable web app, uh, and we can Metasploit all day long and post-exploit all summer long, and we'll have lots of fun. Uh, turns out, most I got just wide eyes. I had no idea what I was talking about. And the one kid that did uh, thought it might be a good idea to scan the entire internet, which was not a good idea. So definitely don't go guns blazing when you want to do that. Um, so try to find a better way to relate to them. Uh, that would be something that they can get on their level. Uh, so we built the internet-controlled robot uh, that they could then uh, control the Raspberry Pi. They knew how it was built. They could then defend against it. They could hack it. Uh, then we could invite our security team. They could hack it, and they could then try to defend it. Uh, but there was still a huge gap with what we were trying to do. Uh, and then I came across the Bloom's Taxonomy for Learning, and I realized that I was really starting at level three of the application layer of where we're trying to teach things. And I was completely missing the baseline version of you know, levels one of two of the knowledge and the comprehension. Uh, and about the time I came across this is when I was actually you know, very deep down in studying the attack framework and adopting it internally at Tripwire. Uh, and found that you know, there is a K in the attack acronym, which is, you know, stands for knowledge, right? So you know, maybe we could use that knowledge and be able to try to apply that to how I'm teaching my interns about security and how you're know, teaching this younger uh, generation about what security means. Uh, so we can use the attack framework and all of the information and data that's there as the, that base level of the knowledge. Uh, and we can use the attack framework. Uh, they provide a lot of uh, ways that we can comprehend this vast amount of knowledge and how we can actually apply it to systems uh, and actually provide that application layer to uh, the systems and actually their learning objectives. So I went through and I tried to kind of split them out into multiple objectives. Originally, I tried to do three of just kind of these ones are easy, these ones are medium, and these ones are kind of really hard, uh, where I got kind of green, yellow, and red. And then I found that there were some that might have been, you know, not necessarily that they'd be able to uh, exploit per se, but they might be able to then, <clears throat> excuse me, they might be able to uh, use those as for other techniques, uh, for example, using like a graphical user interface. Uh, and then there were some where they require some level of infrastructure, uh, some type of server or command and control in environment that they need to be used, so I used Orange. Uh, and I'm always a huge fan of the attack acronym. Whenever I've talked about it to people that don't know it, they're like, oh my god, they really nailed this acronym. And so I started to go through it, and I got to the end, and I got to H, and I'm like, this is just too hard. We're going to put hard, and we're going to go from there. Uh, so digging into how they actually work and how we're using them, uh, the first level of this blue layer are ones where, like I said, that you're not really exploiting per se. You're using the, uh, the graphical user interface or user execution to try and you know, run code, uh, using, you know, querying the registry, really discovering things. These are things that you're probably going to leverage more often than you know, uh, for other techniques. The green ones are ones that really are fairly easy to do for anybody. I would say probably my mom can get through a lot of these ones. Uh, things you know that are people that are brand new to the industry, things like registry run keys, where you can then just put a you know single registry key in the registry, so every time they log into their system, they get you know rickrolled. Uh, or if they actually know about security and doing sticky keys with the accessibility features. Um, by the way, I have a lot of technique names, so get your bingo cards out because I'm gonna have a lot of them up here. Uh, if they know a little bit about security and how to use the command line and you know being able to to to, to mash on the shift key when the window system is locked and pop up a command line, uh, really can open up some people's eyes. Uh, so these ones are very easy to do and very easily approachable. Uh, I put PowerShell and scripting on this one rather than the blue one because I like to have that base level of understanding of uh, how you actually would interact with an endpoint if you are doing some type of red teaming or even if you are on a blue team. Uh, so that way they have that level of understanding and they're not handicapped by using a, a higher level tool. So the higher level tools is what they use in you know, what, you know, Attack 201, if the previous one was Attack 101, uh, using tools like Metasploit or Proof of cop, uh, Code Concept, a lot of tools that you'd find on GitHub, uh, maybe even the Atomic Red Team. 
uh, you know, the things that are very easily obtainable uh, from these tools, uh, exploitation of really anything, the install root certificate, uh, passing the hash, uh, very trivial to do if you know about these tools, uh, but for a beginner, uh, these can be a little bit more uh, to take on from, you know, when my actual intern tried to scan the internet. So I'd like to make sure that they have an understanding of security. I want to make sure that they have an understanding of what the power is of these tools before you hand it off to them. Uh, same way you, you want to teach gun safety to somebody before you hand them a, a, a firearm. Uh, so these ones are you know, kind of easier to, to go on to. Uh, the orange level, uh, these ones, I'm kind of split on how I'd, I'd want to classify these ones. There's quite a few of these ones where they might belong in green, they might belong in yellow, and they might belong in red. Uh, but they need some level of infrastructure to set up to be able to test. You don't necessarily always have a, a service that you can pop a web shell onto or a web server where you, know, you have shared content that you'd want to be able to put stuff on or a command and control server set up in AWS or somewhere on the internet that you can interact with. Uh, that's not to say that it's not, you know, some of these to set up, very easy to do, but there is some type of infrastructure cost that uh, would be going there. Uh, so once I'm, you know, teaching the interns about these things and about the security and I feel that they've gotten a grasp of what uh, it is to, to, you know, what these t uh, techniques are, uh, then I'll probably move into some of these orange ones and start setting up some of these more advanced ones uh, depending on their skill level. Uh, and then the final one is really kind of the more advanced ones where you need custom DLLs or very deep understanding of the, the operating system. Uh, these ones are really kind of on like sub T's level. Um, these ones are green for him. Uh, but these ones are just really hard to do. These are the ones your, your senior level people are kind of going to be looking at. Uh, and if you're using this as a teaching tool, you probably want to just ignore all of these. Uh, so if you compile all of them together, you get kind of the attack rainbow, uh, where all of these are kind of put together and mapped into the attack navigator. Uh, so all of the, the previous you know, four or five slides have just been screen jumps from the attack navigator. Uh, when the beauty of doing it this way and splitting them into them, if you look at techniques, uh, sorry, if you look at tactics like persistence or you look at tactics like defense evasion, some of the bigger ones, you have techniques that are mapped to blue, green, orange, red, yellow. So if you are using this to, uh, whether you're teaching with it or you are using it for, uh, you have a security research team like I have, uh, anybody from junior level that are just coming out of college, interns, senior level people, can provide value if depending on what you're trying to look at. So if your organization is looking at persistence, then you can split up some of these things and say, okay, some of these junior levels can look at some of these, these easier ones while our more advanced people can go into these more advanced ones and be able to adopt these a little bit faster. So I dumped all of the JSON files onto my GitHub page, which is linked here. Um, and I didn't even know this until I did that, but there's a handy little tool where you can actually import content from a URL from the TAC Navigator. Uh, so you can actually import this, the raw content, directly from GitHub. So whoever put that feature in there, my good job. Um, that was really nice. So uh, how do we actually use a clicker? Uh, so how do we actually do this? Uh, first, what we do is we... Uh, we choose a tactic, and usually it's persistence because that one's the easiest one to maintain or to, to teach. Uh, and then we choose one of the techniques within there. So in this case, registry run keys. And we say, okay, well, uh, after you get an understanding, you read the description. Uh, you know, what does it take to actually exploit this system? And when you can exploit it, uh, you know, follow the mitigation steps that are provided by them. And you, are you still able to exploit it with your current techniques that you're using? Uh, are there ways to bypass it? Uh, and you know, whether you can you know exploit it now or you can exploit it after you. Uh, put these mitigation steps, what are the artifacts that are left behind? And uh, can you find anything that's just not listed on the attack page? Because uh, we like to provide feedback to, to attack on all these things. So we look at something like the, the registry run keys, and we have, you know, there's usually a good description here on some of these where it's, you know, uh, adding an entry to the run keys uh, is how you would exploit this. Uh, but there's no run keys listed here, right? So you need to have some type of higher level thinking and critical thinking to figure out what this is. Uh, a lot of these can come from something like the, the examples uh, that are listed here, where we can see actual artifacts of different registry keys on the screen. Uh, some of these are going to come from the actual references that are down here. And if you click on some of these, uh, for example, the first one is Microsoft's documentation, which will only list four registry run keys. And there's a heck of a lot more than four uh, run keys and start locations that are there. So you can start digging through all these different ones. Uh, and as time permits, you can then start building up that foundation of you know, what are the different ways we can do this. And then it's all going to lead to using Google one way or another. We all, uh, we all do it. Um, so using you know, some type of original research around what uh, happens. And there's been a lot of talk around automation uh, today. Uh, but we want to actually go backwards in that. And we want this to be as manual as a process as possible when going through and actually exporting these things. So actually opening up reg, uh, RegEdit, actually creating keys and actually putting values in there instead of just clicking a button and say, look, I got root. Uh, and then you're going to get you know, something like this. Uh, or if you know, a security researcher like me usually just open up calculator. 
Clicker. Uh, so this is the, the, the outcomes that I always try to post to the you know my interns when I'm teaching them, uh, whenever I'm trying to teach a young, you know these younger folks about security and when they're looking at the attack framework. Uh, so what did you learn? You know what do you know now that you didn't know before, right? And there are some things that you know was it already an attack? And a lot of times it's going to be, uh, especially for uh, senior level people. A lot of this, you know, what do you know now that you didn't know before? Um, you know we might see okay here's a new way to obfusc obfuscate something that we didn't know before. Um, and a lot of times there's going to be times where there is research that you did on your own uh, that you can then provide that feedback back to MITRE, and that's really valuable uh, to continue this community along. And then for both the mitigations and the detections, you know, did it work? Uh, did the mitigations work? A lot of them say, you know, employ application whitelisting. But in the case we're, you know, looking before, if we were, I, ap uh, did application whitelisting, we allowed Chrome, we're still going to be able to, you know, uh, exploit that so that we can still, those mitigation steps aren't fully. Uh, so you got to be aware that, you know, even though I did employ all the mitigation steps that the attack framework said to do, there's still going to be ways to bypass it. So what are the detections? You know, we are monitoring the reg registry run keys, and we got to make sure we can have both of those things there. Uh, so there's a couple of resources that I use to actually be able to get the red teaming going faster for my teams. Um, I'm kind of short on time to be able to talk about all of them, uh, but the uh, uh, adversary emulation plans from MITRE, those are really good. Uh, APT Simulator is another uh, neat one, uh, and the Atomic Red Team is really good, but I'll let you guys talk to them since they are here uh, the next couple days. Uh, but very good resources for uh, ramping up your red teaming program. Uh, and with that, uh, I will be able to open up for a couple of questions, so we can go from there. Yeah. Questions? Oh, come on. Someone has a question. You know you want to ask it. <laughs> Back there. Thank you. I'm going to ask the exact same question I did last time. So can oh. you give me a sense of uh, timing on all this? So you, you bring somebody on board and you go through this process? You know, yeah, what kind of time uh, I can use an example from this year. Uh, we had an intern come in this year. He's a computer science graduate from Portland State. A uh, really bright kid, knew nothing about security. Uh, and we kicked him right off, and he was looking at both registry run keys and registry uh, permission stuff and, and adding keys to registry. Uh, within uh, about a month, he had gone through all this whole program, uh, researched everything he could, and actually provide, uh, provided uh, feedback to MITRE to uh, add to the techniques there. Um, so, I mean, that's probably probably on the, the, the you know, short end. Uh, some kids might take longer. Uh, it really depends on the expertise. You know, if you're going to teach something, uh, you know, this core, you know, a security course to somebody, right? If they are a security graduate from college, it's going to go quickly. If they're, you know, high school freshman, it's going to take a little bit longer. So it kind of depends. <laughs> yes, contributing to the winning. Um, so kind of like a reflection of success, it seems like, that you're getting at is contributing back into um, yes. the attack framework. Do you find that there's information that people kind of like gain along the way that is useful to keep track of that maybe ne isn't necessarily like something that you might want to submit? Yeah. Yeah. Um it depends on how you're using it, right? So we have a unique thing where, you know, I have a security research team and we want to, uh, you know, our goal is to increase the coverage of our product, uh, right? So then that's part of the documentation and the outcomes of what they're doing. Um, so I guess it really depends. Uh, really, it's what I have them do is take notes of everything that they're doing, everything that they've learned, whether that's, you know, from attack or whether that's from their original research and basically document their entire research process uh, so that it can be repeated. Uh, and then from that, you can then pull out what objectives you want to do, whether that's, you know, for us pulling, you know, content into our product, uh, providing feedback to to attack. Uh, and then from, you know, from those notes, you can be able to pull it out to whatever you would do. Cool. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it seems like when you get somebody with the outside fresh perspective, it's like they just go ahead and do something that you totally didn't expect. And yes. it works out. But you got to kind of keep track of it. So. Yeah, I mean, I was I was shocked when my intern this year he came up he what what he found uh, I had no idea that it was even possible. <laughs> so, yeah, getting fresh eyes is really good. Great. Well, please uh, join me in thanking Travis.